Hello, everyone, and welcome to our team call tonight. Um, tonight, I am going to be talking about rockstar challengers and turning them into rockstar coaches. And it is Thursday, January 18th, and this is um, part two to a series that we are doing. Alexa did the call last week, I'm doing today, and then Lauren is next week. And um, so I'm really just going to dive into it and I'm kind of going to do a little backstory, but I was thinking about today and what I wanted to share and I, um, I didn't make a PowerPoint, but I have ideas written down. So I'm going to be reading off of my notes cause that's just how I roll. Um, and I wanted to share some ideas with you. So I hope that you leave this call, um, with ideas and things that you guys can, um, share with your team. So, um, first of all, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Emma Tressmore and I have been a coach for four and a half years. Um, I signed up in June of 2013 and I have definitely gone through, um, the ups and the downs and it has been a journey, but it has been, um, such a blessing and one of the best things that has ever happened in my life. And something that I'm really passionate about is challenge groups and challengers. Um, I started out as a challenger. I was very skeptical. skeptical. Um, oh, I think someone is, oh, okay, there. Um, and I was someone who did not get started with a challenge pack. I got started with Brazil butt lift and I joined one of Lauren's very first challenge groups. And I was like, I'm not gonna do the Shakeology thing, but I'll start eating better and I'll start working out. Cause at the time I was a new mom, I had a nine month old and um, I was going to school, I was working two jobs, I was super busy so going to the gym just wasn't working for me. Um, and I, and I want to say that because I don't ever want you to count anyone out that doesn't just get or, um, invest in Shakeology right away. Like never count someone out. It just means that they don't either one trust. So the reason why people have objections is one, because either they don't trust you enough, um, or they don't know enough about the certain thing that you're talking about. Um, so anyways. Okay. Um, I personally have struggled with challenge groups. So, um, I think that, you know, you're going to have really successful ones and you're going to have some not so successful ones and that's okay because you're going to learn and you're going to grow and you're going to learn what works and you're going to learn what doesn't work. And we still do that now. So I run my challenge groups with about four or five of the leaders on my team. And we talk about every month, like what we want to do differently, what worked last month, what didn't work. Um, and what, you know, so we kind of collaborate and figure out what we want to add on depending on what our challengers needs are. So I do feel like your challenge groups are evolving and you are um, always looking for your, your challengers needs. So some, so someone might post something in our challenge group this month that they didn't post last month. Right. Um, and so it's just like, you know, you're going to have different conversations. So here are my, my tips. Um, one, I feel like your challengers are not just in your challenge group. So your challengers are the people that you're having conversations with daily. Um, these are the people that you're building trust with. Um, so I will say, for example, like Gabby, who's on the call right now, she and I had talked for four years, but when she signed up as a coach, she actually joined as a like the challenge group that month, but she had done T25 previous and knew that I had done challenge groups and we were talking for months before. And now she's a part of our team and is killing it. So, um, I just want you to know, like, don't count people out also that aren't a part of your challenge groups. I do feel like you do have challengers that, um, are just people that you talk to one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so something that I love and I have been doing for the last 
I don't know, ever. Cause I mean, I ran challenge groups with Lauren. I ran challenge groups with Alexa. I feel like over my journey of being a coach, I've always run challenge groups with more than just myself because I feel like having more leaders, a part of the group is really like, just fun and you get to like work with your friends and just talk about the, the group and um, I don't know I just think that it's just better to have more brains so I encourage you to link up with four or five of your coaches so if you don't have coaches of your own ask your upline ask you know um, anyone to be a part of their group to help lead it and that way you can get comfortable and do that and then once you I would say are a diamond or above then feel free to take off and run and you know take off with your your leaders and start running groups by yourself or you know whatever you're you're wanting to do but I just say you know choose or if you're a part of a mastermind whatever you want to do four or five people, um, and then that way you can split up days, you can cover different things. So maybe one person is more passionate about, say, personal development or um, food. You know, you can really pick um, your forte and run with that and, and work with your strength. And you really learn from other people. It's really cool. Um, yeah, splitting up the work is super nice, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. Like, you shouldn't have to work harder, just work smarter. Um, Another thing is, I feel like, is doing polls. So doing polls in your challenge group just to get people engaged. So like the other day, I did a poll in our challenge group that was like, who worked out through being sore? Because it's hard to work out when you're sore, right? Like being sore can be a discouraging factor, especially if your challenger is new to working out. It's something that can be really hard. I mean, even me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sore. I do not want to go use these bands today. <laughs> um, so think about these things that your challengers may be struggling with. And I think that's for me too, is I was forgetting a lot of the things that I had struggled with in the beginning. And I wasn't, I wasn't talking about those things. And so I'm really trying to focus more on talking about and meeting my challengers where they're at and remembering that we're all in a different area and different spot of our life. Um, something that I do also is, so I run a self-love challenge. Um, so I started doing that back in August and I do it consistently every single month and I do create a new group every single month. And so they have the option of opting in for that month. So if they want to be a part of it that month, they can be a part of it. If they don't want to be, they don't have to be. But I will say it's really cool because sometimes people won't be a part of it for a month. And then I get a message like, hey, I know I wasn't a part of it for this month, but I really miss it. Can I be a part of it next month? So even if they don't opt in, I'm like, yeah, you totally can. And I think sometimes people like don't realize they're able to be a part of my challenge groups forever. And so I do try and let them know, like, you're always welcome a part of my challenge group, no matter what, like, this is a place for you. And, um, I think that just really making it that inviting community I've seen too, um, when you're consistently posting on social media and your challengers are following you, they start to consistently post on social media. So this is where you'll start to, to notice the people that, um, would be awesome coaches on your team. So the people that are starting to post on social media and be vulnerable, they're actively posting in your challenge group. Um, you know, so making a tribe and a community of your own, right? So really, um, taking, and, and I think too, like running with, with you, like don't try and talk to everyone. Your challenge group needs to be with the people that you are vibing with, right? And that's going to attract the coaches that you want on your team. Okay. The vibe that you're putting out. So another thing I will say that um, I feel like has been awesome is Zoom workouts. So this helps your challengers get comfortable with being in front of a camera. I think that that, I mean, I remember for me when I first got started as a coach, like being on team calls were scary, right? Like locking in and like having your face on this screen and you like don't really know these people, but like, you know, we're all part of the same team. It can be kind of like, different 
But I think that when your challengers start to do this and then, you know, they become a part of this like morning workout. So we started doing weekly workouts on Saturdays, which have actually become a, a daily thing. So I wake up at 530 and I do the PST. Gabby and Haley usually wake up earlier because they're Florida and Wisconsin. So they're like EST um, and midtime. I don't know. Um, yeah, you get what I'm saying. So we, we share when we're working out and just saying, Hey, we're logging on zoom. If you're on, get on. Um, and we just post our zoom link, you know, it's not anything like, I think that's another thing too, is we don't really plan our posts. Um, we schedule them and I know I'm like getting into more about like being a, like a challenge group, but I feel like Ha, like our challenge group has been successful for how it's helped our challengers and how our challengers have been successful and become coaches. And I'm going to say there are people that, um, right now I'm talking to with being coaches. So, um, are about coaching and it takes time. Okay. Like we've been talking for months about it and they have to be ready. Um, I know there's a girl that's consistently been three girls actually that have been consistently in our challenge group and they're all on the verge of signing up um, right now. So, um, let's see, has this been helpful? Feel free to ask me questions as well, because like, I have like a lot of notes here. And so I'm just, I'm hoping that this has been helpful so far. Um, so let's see. So I really feel like I'm helping, um, my new or my challengers learn kind of what we do as coaches in our challenge group. And really I've gotten a lot of this from national wake up calls and being plugged into the beach body champions page and listening to those, um, to do, to what other coaches are doing, but I'm making it my own. And I think that's something that I was missing for a while is not making it my own. Um, or do you know what I mean? Like, I think being consistent and having a morning routine has really just helped me being a challenger myself. So I get vulnerable in there. I'm sharing, I'm using that as a challenge group. Like I'm using it to stay consistent for myself. I feel like it's a huge thing versus like in the past, maybe like two years ago, I was buffering more posts and things like that. Like I rarely, rarely do that unless it's day of and I'm like working in the morning and I think of an idea of a post that I want to do. I'm like, oh, I want to ask that, but like I don't want to ask that for like five more hours. So then I'll just like type it in and like, you know, schedule it for five more hours. But most of the time I'm thinking of the post that day because excuse me, I had energized before. Um, it keeps me engaged. It keeps me aware of my challenge. It keeps me checking in. Um, and I think that something I wasn't doing was doing that as much. Um, okay. So after a challenger has gone through a challenge group for a month, so how long are you self group each month? They're, they're 30 days. So I have one start each Monday of the month. So every first Monday and um, what I do is the challengers that stand out to me that I feel like would be awesome on our team and have just been really inspiring and empowering other women. I invite them to now we have the, um, sneak peek. So we're having a sneak peek on Monday. Um, so I'll, I would say something like, you know, you have really been inspiring, motivating, empowering so many women, and you're really already doing what we do as a coach. Have you ever been curious about what I do? If not totally fine, but I'm just curious. I actually have a sneak peek that just tells you everything about it. And I'd love to add you. It's a free group, completely free. And then, you know, they can say yes or no, but most of the time they say yes. <laughs> and, um, I do want to say, um, like when you're inviting, per like you're their friend. So talk to them like a friend, you know, like you're their best friend. Like, don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? Like, are you mad that you're here right now? Like, are you mad that you're a part of this team and this community? You know what I mean? Like, like really? Think about it in that way and think about it when you're, when you're inviting someone or someone that's just like changing lives in your challenge group, you know, like I have challengers in my challenge group that like are so motivating and so inspiring and they're not even coaches, you know, it's like, 
it's so cool to see these women just really take, take charge. Um, and like, I just think that it doesn't have to be a huge paycheck of why we share this opportunity. And I think that, you know, just being vulnerable and real here, like, I think that sometimes we can forget about that. I know I have. And I think that for a while, that's why I wasn't as successful with my challenge groups, or I didn't feel as authentic with my challenge groups, because I, that's maybe what I was more focused on. But it's like, I felt, or I felt like I couldn't share about this community because of that, right? Like, I didn't know, like, how it started to get, like, weird. But I'm like, this is a community. I have amazing friendships that are all over the world because of social media. Like, I would do this whether I got paid for it or not. And I, and it just comes back down to that. Um, and so I just, like, don't be afraid of a no. If you invite someone and they say no, that's okay. It's their time. Remember you. How long did it take you to become, I'm actually curious, how long did it take you to become a coach and to be a part of our team? Can you please write in the chat box? I'm really curious. Because I know it took me, it took me four months to sign up as a coach, but even then I got started as a discount. I was like planning on returning my Shakeology with a 30-day money-back guarantee. <laughs> but I, I ended up not doing that, <laughs> and I'm still here. So, um, I mean, and some people start right away. That's okay. But I'm just saying like, no, not many people. Um, and that's awesome. Like, it's so awesome to see after your first challenge group, one year, a month and a half, I'm impulsive. Maybe a couple months of ignoring the prompting to be two to three weeks, four years. Yeah. I mean, like everyone has their own story so just look at and look at other people's stories share other people's journeys if you're you know I really do feel like sharing um you know students journeys because I'm not a student right now and sharing other people's journeys you know my challenger stories um you know shouting them out on social media really treating them like they're already a part of the team right like it's, it's, it's almost like, like, and we've been talking about like making shirts for our community because it really is like, and, and honestly, like the self-love challenge has become like team let your light shines community. Right. So like, we're all like, we want to make shirts and do all these things. And so of course it's evolving. Right. But that's what happens when you, when you choose to do these things. And I, I don't know. I wanted to like share, I don't know. I have, I pulled up some of their posts cause they actually like six of them have shared about coaching in the last week. I actually like went back to their Facebook and I mean really like my, it's like these, my challengers that are on or were, they were my challengers. They're like, they're killing it. Um, I mean, I, I'm not doing this alone. Like this is all a team, a team thing. And um, I just feel like the consistency every month, we just have the same files. We just make a quick new cover photo. Um, and, you know, I feel like also be the person people are going to go to when, when they're, when they're ready, you know, they see people, they see you, they've, they've been watching your journey. They've been watching you work out in the morning. Um, just being consistent. Um, so when you see a rock star in your challenge group, what kind of things do you do to help them transition to coaching? So I make sure I'm always watching their stories. Um, I am encouraging them to share more in the, in the group. A the month. So every month we do, we, we, um, shout someone out and the things that I will give them are like the five minute journal or the universe has your back, um, deck of cards. So helping them get into the morning routine. I'm talking to them a lot about miracle morning. Um, we actually do sometimes run five day, um, like a miracle morning group in the self-love challenge, which I do feel like helps set up challengers for success and already helps them kind of get into the groove of having a morning routine, taking time for themselves, self-care. And then they really just, just, they really just see 
um, the benefit of self-care, morning routine, having an accountability group and a community, and then they just want more. And then they're like, well, what's team let your light shine or, you know, whatever your, your team is. And then it just goes from there. Um, and then I just kind of talk with them about it. I, um, I talk to them a lot about the new coach Academy that we have the training. And I do feel like having that starting every single month helps transition. And now that we have like the new coach call, um, and doing that again, I do really feel like, um, helps a lot kind of set them up for success and kind of gives them that pathway of like knowing what's, what's next and what to expect. Um, but Oh, I also um, do weekly check-ins. So I always check in with them also personally. So if they're a rock star, I'm always, you know, I'm texting them. Like I give them my number, I'll text them, um, voice them. Hey, just thinking about you. How are you doing today? Um, so I re I'm really making sure I'm checking in with them as well, like one-on-one -on -one, um, and not just in the group. Um, and, and yeah. I feel like that's really all that I have written down. Does anyone else have any questions? Was that helpful? I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I just feel like kind of just helping them learn the system. Check in on your card. Yeah. Uh, uh, making you first. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's really helpful, too, if you feel, like, overwhelmed, like, you, you know, you have more challenges, like, just writing down three a week, or um, if you, ha like, they chose you as your coach, right? So, like, take that seriously. Like, don't, like, don't compare yourself. It's easy. It happens, right? It's easy to do. Um, but they're, like, they don't really know about anyone else. They chose you. They're, like, they're, they want to work with you. Um and so I feel like for me, that's been something that I've really had to remember to like take myself seriously. Um, and like another thing too is um, like we all get no's. So just like, just know that we get no's, okay? <laughs> but they come back around. Um, yeah, using a whiteboard, you can use like I have so many notebooks, like I write in. I have just like so many pages of notes, probably have like all my team call notes in here too. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that this is helpful. Um, again, just like shouting about recognition, you know, doing the vital behaviors like you would do for your team, but also in your challenge group, I guess. Um, but yeah, I hope that I gave you guys some ideas on like what to do in your challenge group with more engagement. I also, um, if someone wants like a free trial and wants to get started, but they're not sure they want to be a part of the challenge group, I let them know that I can add them when they're doing the free trial. They can be a fly on the wall or they can participate. And then that can help them decide whether they want to be a part of the next challenge group. And I do feel like for me, that holds me account accountable to be consistent in the challenge group and stuff because it's like showing them what they're going to be getting and expecting for next month. So. Um, you know, I think figuring out kind of what works for you, but, and also introducing them. So like, I'll be like, Hey, like she's, you know, new to the group, just trying out the free trial, but just wanted to welcome her or something, um, and welcome them. So yeah, basically teach your challenges to vital behaviors before they even coaches. Yeah. So you do your free group and your challenge group. Yep. So like I, so if they have like the two week free trial, I just add them to my um, ongoing challenge group right now. And then I say, once that's gone or once that's done, then we can get you upgraded to what you want to get started with and then get started in that next self love challenge, which is, you know, starting that following Monday of the month or whatever. So um, yeah, it's been awesome. It's been really helpful. And then, cause then they like see so many other people and then and if that, you know, they're just doing the free trial, they haven't really even thought about Shakeology maybe, or, or you've mentioned it and they're like, eh, I don't know. But then they see so many more of your challengers drinking it and they're like, oh, okay. Like maybe I should look more into this, you know? So it really does help them get their mind started. And maybe if they were considering just the Beachbody on demand all access, 
they're going to reconsider. And then you're talking about energized, right? So then they're like, oh my gosh, what is this pre-workout that everyone has? So then when they get signed up, most of the time now, they want body on demand all access, which you call G and energize because they see everyone talking about energize in the group. Um, can you provide some of the content you use in your self love group? Challenge groups have always been my biggest issue and I need to find a success for and try and groups which each one. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like just being, making a welcome post and making it known that they need to be posting in their group. Like the more they're posting, the more they're going to hold themselves accountable. And I know sometimes that can seem harsh, but like we've made that pretty clear that, yeah, I can share, I can share the screen. I'll do that. Hold on. Ah, wait, where'd you guys go? I'm like, I went to the MacBook store and they like, wait, here you are. Okay. Here, hold on. <laughs> okay. Share screen. Okay, so okay, so this is so we have the ADD obsession in our self love challenge. Um, we have. 99 people. <laughs> whoop whoop. Um, so this is our hello post. Gabby made it this month. Um, so welcome to January Self Love. So we, you know, talk about on Saturdays. Um, we've also sent out welcome emails just to like let them know to check the files and everything like that. Um, so, you know, and, you know, then introduce yourself, include a picture, that type of thing. Um, so then I guess we can go to the files and then I actually just added all like the 80 day stuff. Um, on these, all of these are what we normally post in every single one. It's just these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is just my Zoom login so that every morning they know that this is the login that you click at 5.30 if you're gonna get on for that time. So everything's like in the files. I just really try to make it simple for them. Um, so here's the discussion. So just nighttime check-in, um, just, so we're just, yeah, these are really, she just joined our team, Sari, this is Sari's new coach. Um, so these are the before pictures um, and everyone's just really posting, you know, just keeping accountable, inspiration, sweaty selfies, um, you know, what to use for sliders. Um, really just accountability and a lot of people are posting, you know, what they're posting on Instagram. So, uh, <laughs> you know, just like just posting about all of your stuff. And, and that's the thing too, is like, um, when you're doing this and you're posting it in your challenge group, they're going to start doing that too. Um, was this helpful? I can't see the chat box. So, oh wait, yes, I can. Um, yeah, was this helpful to see? Um, and then I guess like before, oh, and that's another thing. We'll use like the big picture type things. Um, yeah. Oop, I don't want to annotate. Yeah, really lead by example. Um, you know, I feel like, and I, I will say this girl reached out to me today, you know, and she was like, actually my sister's friend <laughs> back in middle school. And she was like, I've been following you and you've inspired me to do ADD obsession. Like, can I be a part of your challenge group? And so people have been not also not realizing that like you just get paired with a coach and they want to be. So like, even if people don't realize that they'll still come to you and ask for advice. So just be that person that people think of, you know? Um, even if they don't really get it, they'll still come to you um, because they thought of you. So, because so many people are starting to do these programs. So many people are, are starting to, like another one of the girls that actually um, 
got a free trial, said she wanted to go do actually do the gym, and then just messaged me about two months later and said she's ready to do Beach Body on Demand All Access. Said her friend's doing it and got great results with P90X. So it's like people people know people that are doing it. So don't be afraid to talk about it, you know? Um because I think you'd be surprised that more people are doing it. So yeah. Oh, that was helpful. Thanks for being on. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, post call giveaway. Oh, also one more thing. Um, the girl that reached out to me that was my sister's friend, she's going to school for um like Something to do with, has to do with food. I can't, I honestly can't remember. And I don't know where my phone is. Um, but she hadn't really thought about Shakeology. And I've really been trying to like talk more about Shakeology and encourage more people to drink Shakeology. Um, because I do feel like it's, it, it's so important. And, um, I asked if she like had done her research and if she would, if I would love her opinion on it because that's what she went to school for and she's getting her master's in. And she, you know, she's like, I'm really skeptical about like shakes and protein stuff. And, and that's another thing is like people think she called you as a protein shake and it's not, that's what recover would be. I would say like that to me in my eyes, that's recover. Shakeology is a superfood smoothie. And I think when you distinguish that to people, it really makes it more clear. And even Madison, my brand new coach, I said that to her the other day. She's like, oh my God, I'm so happy you just said that to me because that is, that makes so much sense. And it's like, you know, people don't really like people, you just say Shakeology and they just automatically place it with another protein smoothie. Um, so yeah, I just, yeah, have been trying to educate people more about it and tell them about the podcast and tell them about the YouTube videos and just tell them to do their own research. Because I feel like when you say that to people, they automatically, like you automatically gain tr their trust because you're literally telling them to go learn about this where I feel like not everyone is doing that personally. Like, no, I'm not saying us. I'm saying other companies and things like that. Like, I feel like it's really important when we, to educate people on the importance of it because that's what, that's what helps people sus be sustainable and lifers and drink Shakeology consistently, right? Like, we've all done our research. We all know why Shakeology is good for us. And so it's just as important for our challengers to know the same thing as it is that we know, right? So... And I don't know about you, but I just got an email about all of my co all of my customers that are not on Shakeology, and I'm about to go through that list, and I'm about to go send out an email. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, um, she, so she, we were just talking, and I just told her about everything. She hasn't responded to me yet, but I asked her if she would be open to sharing, or like, her opinion. I just asked her about this um, right now, um, but yeah. Oh, what do you say in these emails? She's asking you, Gabby. Yeah. You said you say it in your emails to your leads that it's not a protein um, shake. Yeah, no, I just tell them that it's not just a protein shake. I literally list um, all the nutrients in the shake. And then I say at the end, um, it's not just a protein shake. Um, and I specify that it's superfoods. So um, I just do my own personal research and then I kind of post it into my email. That's all I do. Yeah. And then I link YouTube videos that I think that I would like if I was first starting. So, yeah. Yeah. Like YouTube videos are my jam. I send people YouTube videos more than often. Um, I don't, I think it's really great for them to watch the videos. And if they, you know, I feel like, and, and that's another thing too, is with my challengers, um, even before they're a part of my challenge group, I video them. So I will video message them. So it's my face. I'm talking to them. Um, and I feel like that really gets them engaged and more excited and more ready to join um, sooner than later. 
So, and I enjoy it. I like doing the video messages. It's fun. I just walk around my house. Ashton's like probably screaming most of the time and whatever, but it's like my life, you know, like they don't care. They like, they like that. They want that. They don't like, they don't want the, the, the perfect, right? Like they can most of the time relate to. And then it's even better because they'll send me messages back and their kids are in it. And so it's fun, you know, like you really are connecting with the people that, that you're supposed to connect with. Okay, sorry, I was just reading this. As far as cost for psychology, how do you compare it? The thing most people buy that they wouldn't need to buy anymore, like multivitamins, probiotics, prebiotics, probiotics. Um, honestly, I just like tell people it was my prenatal. I talk about how it has everything that you need in it. You wouldn't need to buy your, your multivitamins, probiotics. Um, but I don't really ever feel like that comes up because not many people are really taking multivitamins, prebiotics, and probiotics alone, at least that I'm talking to on a regular basis, maybe some, but, um, yeah, I would just say like it, that's what, like, I always am like, okay, you go get a bag of maca root at the store and it's like 30, $35 and there's maca root in the smoothie that you'll have every single day for a full month plus 70 other super foods for $4 a day, you know? So it's like, that's just like a no brainer. Like, and just talk about your story. Like I'm, like, yeah, I'm a coach, but like, I'm also a single mom. I'm still living on a budget. doesn't mean that I can like just go buy whatever, but Shakeology and Daily Sunshine are important investments in my life. You know, like I think that, yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, that's why I tell people to go listen to the podcast because on the podcast, there is a podcast that says, everything you need to know about why Shakeology is different than everything else out there. So that's why I love the podcast and other resources. Cause then I don't feel like I have to be sitting here, like explaining to someone these things when the creator of Shakeology, you know, has made this podcast for us that we can use. Um, it's, if you have an iPhone, go to your podcast app on your iPhone. It's the purple app kind of looks like a, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's right up there in the middle. And if you go to it, there is a podcast. In, it's called Inside Shakeology. Um, and there's also the podcast for the Team Beachbody podcast that has all the National Wake Up Calls replays. Um, but yeah, there is a podcast all about that. And I just, I always screenshot it, tell my challengers or customers where to find it and tell them to go listen to it. Um, because I just, I know so many people love podcasts too. And I think that podcasts makes it almost more like quote unquote acceptable, if that makes sense. And so people will like play it in the car when they're driving or like whenever they have the time. Um, you know, I think sometimes that is helpful, especially if they commute versus like a video and stuff. So I just feel like I like to give people their different options. I still send them both. I send them the video and the podcast. Like, here's both. Take your pick. <laughs> whatever works for you. So, and then if they don't, whatever, on them, you know? But I'll keep sharing the success of my challengers. I'll keep sharing that, and they'll eventually come around because I'm not going anywhere. Like, I, and people know that. Like, people can tell, right? Like, so, so be consistent. Even if you're having a hard time, you know, it's fine. Talk about it. Like, be real. We're all human, you know? Just like you'd be in your challenge groups, try and be like that on your social media because um, that really helps, yeah, be authentic. So. And I will say, you know, I post about my challenge groups a lot, but, you know, there's, like, a few people that still don't want to, but they will, you know, they will. So. Never give up. I just, just never give up on anyone. I feel like that's really the bottom line too. <laughs> just like never give up on anyone, you know, like Lauren never gave up on me. Right. Like just never give up on anyone. Oh, I love you. Of course. 
Yeah, thanks for being on. I know we all have families. I see Abby's driving. <laughs> I hope you're being safe. <laughs> um, but thanks for being on. You're sweet. And Gabby, I know it's super late there too. So if you're on the East Coast and stuff, thanks for being on. I appreciate you.